Okay. Um, how's it going? All right. Um, done with my character crisis. I'm out of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what was, your, just what was your character crisis? Just Peach Marth. If, if, like every few months, I get a character crisis over Peach Marth, and I'm just like, I can't play this character anymore. Between switching between Peach and switching to Marth? No, no, no. Like, just not playing Peach anymore. Like, I, I'll play Peach Marth, and I'll, I'll try to grind out this matchup, and I just feel so stagnant. I don't feel like I can do anything. Mm. It, I just get so shut down by Marth that are, like, slightly better than me. I certainly feel you on that. It's a difficult matchup. I do think that Peach definitely loses the matchup. Yeah. But... I also think that you can make it pretty difficult for Marth if you do everything right. Mm -hmm. But it's a tricky one. It's it's definitely a very tricky matchup. And I think from playing a lot of Peach against Marth, one of the most frustrating things for me was I play against some Marth, I'm getting bodied, I practiced a bunch, I finally can beat that Marth, and then I play against a Marth with a slightly different style and... Yeah. I have no idea what to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel so that. I definitely feel you on that. I feel that. So I personally think that... Uh, actually, really quick before we start, could you just do a quick introduction for the two? Oh, sure. Just yeah, who yeah, you yeah. are, how long you've been playing, what your goals uh, are for the My name's Swagger, or B. I used to go by Swaggerson, but eh, I don't like that tag. Uh, I've been playing Smash like all my life, like casually, like with my brothers and like against CPUs. So I've always been a fan. I started like caring competitively, like at Big House Five is when I cared. I remember I don't know why that was the tournament, but it was. I was just like, oh, these other games are lame. Melee is pretty cool, and I only I was only ever a fan, but I always wanted to uh, to learn, and I started learning Melee on New Year's Day of this year. And oh, you said of this year? Yeah, oh, I've been okay. a fan for like my whole life, but I've right. never. Right. Like, okay, I didn't realize you were that new. I yeah, it. I never put the actually learned melee because I listened to all the fucking like dumb Reddit Smash Bros players like it's too hard. Oh, You'll no. never get it. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I guess I'll never get it. But then once I figured out that Anthers was a thing, I was like, wait, I can play melee online during when I can't go outside. This is like the perfect time to learn the game. I've always wanted to learn. Yeah, that's true. I think Slippy definitely made it a lot easier to get into Melee because you mm -hmm. don't have to go to tournaments and be like, hey guys, and then have some guy like who goes O2, like finally gets his chance to feel powerful and he's just yeah. like, oh, you can't even wave dash. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so now people get to play on Unranked and practice against Dr. Mario. So, so I've <laughs> almost been playing for a year, like literally. Okay. I on New Year's Day. Okay, yeah, oh. that's, that's pretty cool. It makes it easy to judge your progress. For sure. <laughs> um, In terms of how long you've been playing. But yeah, I've been playing Smash my whole life. It's just like always been like my favorite game. That's but sick. I'm, yeah. And uh, like, what are your goals? How good are you trying to get? Or how um, serious do you want to take it? I like to get top 10 in Georgia. Okay. That's my first goal. Alright. And then we'll see from there. Okay, sounds good. And, um... So, by character crisis, you exclusively just meant, like, playing Peach against Marth was frustrating? Yeah, I mean, it okay. just has me, like, I need to switch mains, because I can't, I'm, like, okay. regardless of what people think of the matchup, I'm just so lost in it, and I feel like I can't get anywhere. I well, feel okay, like if so, I grab a turnip, I get grabbed, if I, I don't know. So, first of all, I do think that playing Peach in 2020 and onward is a pretty frustrating endeavor, mm -hmm. because people are a lot more willing to camp now, and they're also they're also a lot more willing to um, or not more willing, but they're you know they're gonna slide off di your up airs and they're gonna mm -hmm. tech your down smashes a lot more often stuff like mm -hmm. that. So I don't know. It's definitely a, it's not an easy road for Peach. And if you mm -hmm. do play Peach, you will have to accept that Peach is a super sick character, but she does have mostly losing matchups among the top tiers, and you're gonna for have sure. to be okay to like play play that but i do think peach is super sick and you can definitely get top 10 in georgia playing peach yeah i just uh i also feel like it's a character so like stuck ever since armada left like we don't really know what where she fits in the meta right now i feel like mm -hmm. which is also something that i kind of want not that i'm that good but that also drives me to the character well it's, it's definitely like, it's, it's it's a nice feeling that's yeah. kind of like how i feel with falco too is like exactly it, yeah. it's kind of fun to try to push a character when you feel like other people mm -hmm. aren't 
So I feel like honestly, Peach is like the most stagnant high tier right now. Probably um, one of the most. Yeah, no, you, you're probably right. Um, at least Sheik has like Duck. Sheik is mm -hmm. pretty stagnant too, except All for right. that though. Yeah, it's mostly Fox just keeps moving. Mm -hmm. Um, Marth moving it. A snail's pace as he always has <laughs> Zane, Zane's pace. because even if zane figures out something no other marth will implement it ever like you're actually so right <laughs> zane zane did stuff i did stuff yeah. in 2015 with marth no one st no one took it zane did mm -hmm. the exact same things in 2018 with marth and still no one has <laughs> taken it and i i think they just they're just dumber than a sack of mm -hmm. hammers so <laughs> that's that's the sad it's it's, it's sad but uh you know, you just pat the marathon on your head. Good job, good job, man. You don't need to learn. <laughs> All right, so let's get into the Peach Marth. Um, this is obviously one of Peach's roughest matchups, sort of like objectively. Like, yeah, it feels it, like the second worst to me behind Puff, which I know doesn't matter that much. Like, but that's what. It yeah, is. I think it's probably the second worst. Um, because Fox is kind of bad, but at least you can combo Fox really yeah. consistently whereas you don't really have consistent combo game on marth and for so sure. there are okay let's watch for a bit and there are like a few guidelines for this matchup and there are like ways specifically to play it and i'm gonna sort of get into those while we watch through it rather than just talking about them all at once sure sure okay so uh how how does this match go is this like, oh, uh, these are just friendlies, mm -hmm. um, but I was I was trying. I mean, I was like talking to some friends on a call, but I was still trying. Okay. And like, um, and I can think it also can give you a better idea of like what my I don't know what the right word is. Also, like. it's good news for you. I fixed my slippy, so we won't have any weird slippy crashes oh, finally. So They're... apparently, the reason is that you can in dolphin settings for the slippy thing, you can actually there's like a way you click like reset playback dolphin. And mm -hmm. sometimes dolphin settings apparently just changed randomly, and it causes crashes with the playback. So I talked to Fizzy, and that's what that's what I did. So now we don't have that problem anymore. Wow, actually, that, that actually rewinds so much smoother now. Wow. What What made me want to play Peach again was Dubs. I started playing Peach and Dubs. And I was like, I should just play this character. Who doubles. Cares? Yeah. Yeah. Peach is really, really good in doubles. In doubles, yeah, she's, she's significantly better than in singles. Yeah. I think. Okay. So, you start out with the turnip pull and get grabbed for it. Is that, was that a stitch phase? <laughs> was it? I didn't even know it was. That'd be really funny. No, it wasn't. I For some reason, I thought it was. Okay. I think uh, they read me there, because I do that every game. <laughs> do what? Just drop down and pull turnip. I do that a little too much. Mm. Okay. 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 All right, there's a lot to take just from this first stock, actually. Go, go nuts. <laughs> I'm just kind of seeing what, what happens no, for, for a bit. Though. Okay, yeah, there it is again. Okay, okay, okay. So the most basic thing in this matchup, as you know, is to have a turn up out. Like, you need yeah. a turn up in your hand, or Marth heavily wins neutral. Mm -hmm. And so, but the thing is, is you don't need a turn up in your hand to win neutral if Marth is approaching you. You only need it in your hand if Marth is not approaching you. And so okay. a big so okay, so there are a few guidelines in the matchup. The first thing to to understand at all times, Marth is camping you and you are camping Marth. If Marth <laughs> yeah. is not camp so like this is like one of the campiest matchups in the game, you should typically go down to literally like two and a half minutes on the clock, like almost every game. Mm-hmm especially if you lose. Like, if you win a game and it's in, like, two minutes or something, that's fine. That means the Marth is being a dummy. Mm -hmm. But if you lose the game, it should be down to, like, two to three minutes every game. Yeah, I've actually had some go to time. A lot. That's fine. No, that's fine. That, yeah. that is with well within the realm of, like, variation, especially mm -hmm. on, like, bigger stages and things like that. Going to time in this matchup is completely acceptable, and honestly, sometimes you should play for it. It's like it's just an extremely defensive slow matchup and I still think it's pretty fun but it is it is very slow and it's very like you have to play like 70 neutral interactions every single stock and if you 
like basically if you lose and the match wasn't super long then that means you were heavily committing too much to a lot of things rather than playing okay. the safe wall game because marth cannot realistically approach peach very easily like at all mm-hmm and so, and obviously, Peach literally can't approach Marth, especially like without a turnip, she can't approach. But so there is a mix-up here where you can crouch, and it'll basically. So when Peach does her pluck animation, usually she crouches first, and even if you don't crouch first she goes into like this duck animation yeah. while she plucks it, and so a lot of times Marth will react to that. To be able to uh, to be able to get you out of the turnip pull, and so I'm pretty sure that's basically like what he actually reacts to, or maybe he reacts to the fact that you do okay. this every game. But regardless, he, this will happen. So mm -hmm. what you can do is you actually have a mix up between a turnip pull and like a crouch um, fake turnip pull, mm -hmm. and this is actually like actually your base mix up in the matchup that like kind of. Like, if you can't protect yourself from pulling turnips, you're not going to be able to um, get them, get them like, at all. Yeah. So Yeah, that makes sense. I'll go into the game in more in just a second. I just want to show you. So I actually got this from Triff, and this is by far, in my opinion, the best way to pluck turnips. Gross. There we go. What would be the best thing to do out of that crouch? Like a down tilt or a down smash? Um, I think at that percent you can probably do a quick nair. Okay. Or you can, um, if he gets close like that, maybe you could grab and down throw in the corner right there because that's kind of like a really bad spot for him. Okay. Um, but yeah, so regardless, the idea is that if you're here, your options are you do this and then you do like that or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or you, you do this and you just pluck so those are the two options you have and there's a really good mix-up with dash away where when you dash away if he immediately comes in on your dash away you can hit him with dash away dash back in dash attack that's like a really common mix-up you can do and then another option is you can dash away crouch and you can dash away crouch into a back air so you do this and into a back like this crouch back air and okay. or just even a wall back air like uh do that Wow, my, sure. my peach tech feels so bad right now. But regardless, so basically the idea is that you do this, you let them see the crouch, and then you punish their approach, trying to stop your turn up pull. That makes sense. So you, there's like a timing to it mm -hmm. where they can just barely react to your crouch, and then they'll come in thinking, like they're thinking that they're going to punish this. And especially if you crouch before the turn up pull, it's really hard for them to react to, because they can't react to you just crouching down. They mm -hmm. have to like... Because like this, doing this and then plucking is way more, and mixing that up with that is like you can't really react to the difference between those. Whereas yeah. if like you run over and you do this, they can just see you like kind of stop oh, and yeah, plucking. Really and so, but if you're doing this and they don't know if this is this is leading into the back air, then yeah, that's good. Or even just crouching and then dashing back out of mm -hmm. crouch into a dash attack, it like significantly protects you from them dealing with your uh, turnip pulls, like significantly. That is like I think that is actually the biggest deal in this whole matchup is being right, able yeah. to do that and get your turnips out because otherwise they can literally just sit at this range where they avoid your dash attack and then when you pluck they grab you and you've probably yeah. noticed that so yeah. so so many times but with this mix up that's not possible and that opens up the matchup so much yeah that's really smart so that's like really 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 and really important incredibly important the next thing is whenever you're in situations like this your main mix-up your main go-to is always air dodge always yeah now i'm not telling you to air dodge every time but air dodge is your basis and that's because it has so many options like you could you can air dodge directly down into the ground you can air dodge in place and mix up a fastball you can air dodge and edge cancel in certain cases. You can mm -hmm. air dodge up. You have so much variation you can do with this air dodge. And a lot of times with Marth, he has to pretty heavily commit to his options to actually hit you. Where like if he jumps and tries to fare here, but you air dodge down and past him, he doesn't really have a good way to like actually punish you because then you yeah. land and you can ASDI down his moves and stuff like that. 
Mm -hmm. So when you're above Marth, you almost never want to do a non-air dodge option unless yeah. you know... Like, a lot of times, you what you do is you you float, and you, like, kind of bait him, thinking he, you're going to air dodge, and then he'll swing, and then you can hit him. Mm -hmm. And so another thing is that you almost always want to use your full resource, which you do a good job of here. Not, not that you always want to use it, but you want to be... You want it to be an option that you can float the whole time. There are some peaches who they float, and they go, like... One two one two, and then they go in like immediately, like every no, time. Yeah. And you I really want to avoid that. Sometimes you want to go in instantly out of the float. Sometimes you want to go in and like at the last. Sometimes you literally want to like like let your float die out, and then air dodge. You know. Mm. And so look, so if you had gone for like right here, if you go up like this, actually, so in this situation, uh, so. Like I said, the air dodge is a huge deal. A lot of times, instant double jump air dodge is, like, your best friend in this matchup. That is what will get you out of almost every combo Marth does. Is, like, if he fares you in center and you DI away and down, and then double jump air dodge down immediately, you'll get out of, like, 80% of Marth combos. Really? I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. So, like, even right here, if you... Well, this is this is really tough because it looks like you might land on the stage, so I can't blame you for that one. But in this situation, you could literally do like this double jump. Well, okay, maybe not this situation. This was this was too weird. I'll bring it up in another spot. But yeah, once you're in this spot right here, what you want to do is you want to look for the moment where Marth is gonna commit, and like this feels like a pretty heavy commitment. So what you do is you float. You you would actually drop out of your float or. F direct your float right at him so it's like basically you know when he's gonna swing his sword and mm. so, based on his positioning and so you want to just wait and then you air dodge right before he swings his sword so he doesn't have a chance to react and you could air dodge to like right here and you'd be fine mm -hmm. but if you go for this down air like that's not really like a good option mm -hmm. oh hey look you did, the, you did the air dodge the second time yeah. But you could have done the yeah. same thing the first time. And it's basically that exact same situation, except he full hops. But yeah, the air dodge gets you out of the situation. Once you're here, your goal should always be immediately, if possible, to get to the ground. If he's okay. on the ground and he's sharking you and you can't get to the ground, that's fine. That's when you need to, you know, be a little tricky with it. But if you're here and he's like this, just go to the ground. Like, blah, blah, blah. like as fast as you can, get to the ground. Because then what you don't want is you don't want him to be able to get this situation where he gets you back into the corner. Whereas if you yeah. had if you air dodge and you see he commits right here, like as fast as you can, just go to here because his options from here are very very limited, and he doesn't want to come down on top of you. Neither character in this matchup wants to come down on top of the other character. So yeah, so right here you need to get down to the ground. It's basically like you want center stage on the ground, and if you can't be in center, you want to be more center than he is. Okay. That's like a super important concept for Peach in general. So it's like yeah. the fact that he is more off stage than you, this is an indicator that like you want to keep center basically like at all costs. So by letting him jump past you like this, then and getting this, now you're in this awful situation where I think you actually could have uh shield drop, double jump, naired or up aired or something here. Yeah. I should know. Don't. But uh regardless, so because if you had done the same thing, but you ended up in center, he wouldn't have this pressure option. And if he went mm -hmm. for this and you're in center, you can just dash dance, fair, dash dance, dash attack him or whatever. But because he has you in this spot, then he gets you in this situation again. And it's okay to go high here like you did. I think as long as you keep in mind that you could um, air dodge down immediately out of this mm -hmm. double jump more often, then I think, I think it's fine to go up like this because... You basically don't want to get early Ken combo, so it makes sense to go high like this. But once you went high, I would have recommended right here to air dodge to the top platform. Okay. And there's the air dodge through again. This is this is good. This is good play to do the air dodge through. But you it seems like it goes for the you go for the downer the first time and then the air dodge through. And there's no mm -hmm. reason why you couldn't just go for the air dodge through the first time. Okay. So you see your opportunity to get to pluck a turnip. Whenever you get this opportunity to pluck a turnip, you should take it like you did. Mm -hmm. So you're right here, you're like, okay, sick, I have time to pluck a turnip. You do this, this is good. So then, all right, so then what's this situation? So 
you need to always be super aware of Marth's options and being able... You just remember that any approach Marth does, you have the options to shut it down. The only way that Marth can approach you is he can get kind of close and try to throw stuff out and hope you overcommit. And in a world where you have a turn up out already, those commitments can actually lead to a punish for you. And so he has to be really careful with that. And so... So, okay, so in this situation, what do you go for? Okay, so you go for a wave dash here, but this isn't really going to do anything. You have the turn up in your hand. There's no reason not to throw it. Okay. And if you I, don't... I think I was, thought I was going to get grabbed. I think that's why I did that. Not that it was good, but I think that was my mindset. Right, but that's effort. not going to actually save you from the grab. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, like, if you grab this turn up right here and you think he's going to come in, you you should just throw it. And okay. if you... there is So, you don't have to throw it every time because then maybe it becomes too predictable. But in, like, a case like this where he doesn't already realize you're going to throw it, you should throw it. And then there's this case here. What you can do here is you can float right above his so the thing is look if he goes for an early forward air or an early nair that will catch this jump here but if you throw the turn up and he jumps and he jumps into the turn up you might get a combo here or you might just dash wave dash so i don't know if you know about dash wave dash but like if you uh, dash wave dash it goes pretty for a little bit further than doing wave dash with peach with with all the characters Oh, okay. I didn't Be because you slide a little bit during your jump squat. So, so like, dash, wave dash, if you're going to get out of the way here, will make you go a little bit further, and that can help. But another, mm -hmm. but the other option... So the, the thing is, like, if you dash, wave dash here, and he does, like, a fair to catch where you are right here, then you get, like, this short hop, turn up, nair, combo, whatever you want here, or, a, or like, a turn up, drop, dash, tack, whatever. You have a lot of options there. And... But a very common option that you still have to be aware of is if he down tilts here or grabs, you can do a float height right here into a back air, which will whip That's punish both of those. Hmm? Because we were talking about like the mix up of like when I'm crouching, but once I have the turn up, I can also just do that same back air, right? Like yeah, right here. exactly. Yeah, exactly. It yeah, actually becomes a better that. mix up because you have, you have the option of you can float here. The thing is, is when you're plucking the turnip, the back air you're doing, a lot of times you want to do the lowest one because it's the fastest. But you can, it's good that you brought that up because doing the one that dodges down tilt and grab is actually super good in like every situation. I'm sorry, can I go grab water real quick? Go, I'll be yeah, right for like it. five for seconds. It. Yeah. Thanks. What's up, chat? This is such an interesting matchup. This is definitely going to help him out. This is definitely going to help him out. If I take your lessons, can I beat SFAT too? Potentially. Alright, I'm back. Okay. So, okay, so we're, we're talking about this float here. One nice thing about that float also is that depending on the situation, you can turn up drop and then combo that into like a shield pressure or a, an aerial. Just what, like short hop Z? Hmm? Like a short hop Z turnip drop? Yeah, yeah, sh short hop Z turnip drop, exactly. Okay. So that's just another thing to add to your arsenal here. And if you look mm -hmm. from Marth perspective, he basically, if he doesn't go in right here, if he kind of waits right here, he's just going to get turnip thrown. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and if he comes in, you might actually just hit him with like a float aerial right here. And mm -hmm. so most of the time, they're going to kind of want to like zone right here. And so you like so basically once you have established so like i've basically outlined a few mix-ups for this situation for you mm -hmm. and it's it's pretty good like it marth can't just rush in when he when you have these mix-ups anymore he can't just run in and grab or run in and down tilt yeah once you have established that and made it so that marth can't directly rush you and he has to kind of zone right here 
then you get to play a different game because instead of being forced to throw things out, the Marth already acknowledges he can't run in, and you'll kind of notice this where the Marths are kind of like less down to rush you once you start doing these mix-ups more. They're less down to rush you, and at that point you can sort of play this, play this game where like when Marth dashes at you at this range, you don't actually have to be scared of it because you already know that most of the time he's not going to fully approach because you've, you're you able to punish the full approach. For sure. So there are a lot of situations as things get more advanced in this matchup where Marth will like literally like jump up and nair in place and you can literally just stand here and not wave dash because you're, you can be reasonable or crouch here because you can be reasonably certain that he's not going to full approach you after you have established that you can defend against those situations. So yeah, this is basically not even a good situation for Marth because you can like literally like ASDI down and then like nair him out of it. Yeah. Like look at you have so many frames here. So then okay, so he hits you with that. Um, this is kind of just an unfortunate situation, I think. Yeah, I don't think I'm. Yeah, I would have probably rolled there, rolled back to center. Roll is actually pretty good against Marth when he doesn't when he doesn't expect it. Okay. Because he has to, like, pretty heavily commit to things, and he doesn't really have, like, a good, like, short hop over, like, short hop at you aerial, like Fox and Falco. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't have, like, a super broken chic dash attack type of thing. So most of the time if you roll, he kind of has to set up a similar situation. And a lot of times if you roll and he chooses to go the opposite direct direction, like, let's say you're you're right next to him here. Not saying that this, this would happen, but whatever. I'm just saying, like, if you're here and you roll and he guesses left and he moves to the left, you get a free turn up pluck. And that's yeah. part of why roll is real good there. Okay, so that was a good narrative. This is the mix-up with the instant air dodge right here, is that... He has to worry about you either double jump instant air dodging to the ground yeah. or double or jump, jump instant jump. aerial. And so that's those that's like the, the mix up you get that can make it kind of scary for him. Yeah, here's the situation again with the turn up pull. Well, I'm trying to like think I know it's too maybe too quick, but like condition them like I'm gonna jump there, which I normally like to do, and then just snap back down after I cancel it. Say that again. So like what I'm trying to do is like my mindset is like to make them think I'm gonna just fully commit to the double jump and go through the whole animation. What I like, because I like to normally do that right there mm. in the corner, where I hit the first stock. But the, my idea was like, no, I'm just gonna double jump, cancel Nair real quick. So yeah, no, to, like, even even without the conditioning of being able of jumping, doing the full jump away, a lot of times, this is like a good mix up, and he has it. It makes him reconsider because when he's doing mm -hmm. a combo, most of the time you're gonna double jump air dodge out. Mm -hmm. And, like, there are literally Marth combos. Like, if Marth wants to get a big combo on you, it'll be, like, hit, then you double jump air dodge, then he hits you again, then you double jump air dodge, because you're getting yeah. to the ground on each one. Yeah. And then he hits you again, you double jump air dodge, and he hits you again, and then you double jump nair, and then that's how you get out of the combo, or whatever. Yeah. Like, that'll happen, like, quite a bit. So, he ends up here. Um, hmm... So, this is a little bit ambiguous based on, like, the style of Marth you're playing against. But if you end up here, most of the time, I like to pressure here. Because okay. it basically forces him to dash back. So, I might do, like, a quick run in and try to nair him. And then that basically, like, this matchup, because there's so many neutral interactions, it works really heavily on conditioning. And so mm -hmm. if this if in this situation you go for a quick nair and he dashes back, he doesn't actually have like any direct punishes for you. But what you're doing is you're establishing your space. Like mm -hmm. so he does this down air and if you go immediately in for the nair, he dashes away and then you're back to neutral and nobody really died or committed. The next time he's in this situation, he's not going to think, "Oh, I'm going to approach Peach," you know? Like mm -hmm. everything you do needs to be to get to convince the marth that approaching you is not ever going to work and that if he gets near you you're gonna like you know you're just gonna scrap it up and throw stuff out yeah. and then as soon as marth is finally like fine like i'll play the careful spacing game you're just like turn up turn up turn up turn up you know <laughs> so like that's it's kind of the matchup like i can hear them saying that fine <laughs> when like i win <laughs> <laughs> 
fine. I guess I'll play. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> if only Peach could jump out of this animation, that would be great. But so yeah, this is another unsafe turnip pull. What you can yeah. do is you can do like multiple fake turnip pulls into the real one. So if you're right here, what you can do is literally like float here and get ready to down air him. Then he has to dash dance again, and you can kind of like. So what 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 they'll do when they realize you're doing the fake turnip pulls is you'll be like fake turnip pull and then they 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 dash dance right here, and mm -hmm. what you can do is you can like float in a little bit and kind of like bait them like mm -hmm. oh, am I gonna and then you can sneak in a, a reverse dash attack. Yeah. yeah if if sure. they're if they're crowding you too much or you can sneak in like a dash in there or something like that. A really big thing in this matchup, as I'm sure you already know, is you almost always want to be anchored to the ground or, like, right next to the ground. Yeah, up air drives me crazy and up tilt. I fucking hate those moves. I feel like... Um, when, like yeah. I don't know. No, I agree. Those, those moves are very infuriating. So right here, if you're going to use this double jump, like, basically your options here are you could double jump right here and then mix him up and float to ledge or what you could do is double jump float and then fast fall umbrella or something like that to like mix him up trying to edge guard you here if you're gonna go low but if you're not gonna go low you should I, usually go a little higher i should know this but i don't get my float back from ledge right i don't know you double don't jump. No. yeah yeah that's what i thought okay um yeah, so you float right here, but the problem now at this range is, yeah, you have the air dodge to the platform or the air dodge to the ground, but at the, like, where Marth is, like, he can basically narrow down your options, he, but he can just fair forward smash right here, and he probably does. Oh, okay. Well, he can fair forward smash, and it would beat everything you do there. So you just have to watch out for, like, doing it at convenient heights for him. Mm-hmm. Okay, what do you do right here? What's the situation? I, I definitely didn't mean to do that. <laughs> okay, so the shield here is okay, but you really want to be doing, like, shield and then do, like, <laughs> like instant nair out of shield and then, like, shield again. Those, those types of... And, like, take a little bit yeah. of space. Those types of things are good because it's... Like, like I said, this matchup is all about convincing the Marth that you are dangerous, you know? Like, you see, like, an animal in the wild, and they get yeah, up yeah, on their yeah. hind legs, and they're like, I'm big <laughs> and scary, I promise! You know, that is what you have to do against Marth. <laughs> you have really to good. scare the Marth away by yeah, making yourself sure. look as big as... Like, look at all my hitboxes! I got tons of them! They come out fast! You better stay away, Marth! That's, like, what you need yeah, to do. Yeah. So, that like, by sense. shielding and then throwing out Nairs kind of randomly here, you're mm -hmm. telling the Marth, look, if you come in and you try to hit me, sometimes you might get Nairs. You know, you don't want that. And so you better you yeah. better respect my space a little bit more. But if you're just shielding here, the Marth is like, la 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 la, and they just get to, like, wait here, five ever, and then wait for your shield to get smaller and get ready for whatever stupid pressure they're planning. For sure. For sure. That actually makes a lot of Oh, fun. come on. You, you, this is 100% a punish. Right here? Oh, yeah. You, you just, I was just scared. You gotta be punishing. Mm-hmm. Because the thing is, is like Marth outranges you, but he doesn't beat your options. If you're close, if you're close to Marth and he can't get away from you, you destroy Marth. Yeah. It's kind of like Sheik, but even worse. Because Sheik actually has good grounded options. Marth doesn't have any grounded options. He has grab. Like, other than that, he just loses to you. And, like, all of his aerials are pretty slow, and most of them he wants to throw them out while falling. Like, if he does a rising aerial and you crouch it, like, it's you're just going to get a punish. So it's like, if he does an early aerial and you crouch, or shield, he you get a punish on him. And so, and if he does a grounded move and you hold down or shield, a lot of times you will get a punish on him. And so he, a lot of times, will want to move out of your way in situations like this. You don't need to be scared here. This is Marth's time to be scared. Okay. Every time, sure. I like, literally don't see Marth. You see that? He like went completely behind you. That was crazy. Oh yeah, that is weird. What? <laughs> Look at that. Like he yeah, like disappears. <laughs> you just barely see the cape. Okay. But yeah, so obviously this is this is like where you want to be punishing, and so this is the, this is the thing that's kind of frustrating is that you go for, you move out of the way, 
Like, if you had just dropped shield right here and dash attacked, he doesn't have a way to get away from you, but because you wave dash away, and then you dash attack, and you da you wave dash away, dash away, and then you dash attack, now yeah. he has barely enough space to get out of the way yeah. for his dash back. He didn't have I, that before. I just didn't think I know where, like, she landed. Like, I don't know, not to John, but, like, I just, I thought, like, she might overshoot. I don't know. Okay. Like the well, if he if he is side. near you, I need to see hitboxes and a lot of them. Yeah. And you need, you yeah. need to be like <laughs> with the nair, like fast nairs, yeah. fast backers, fast uppers. They need to be out there. They mm -hmm. need to be action. Like they are not action. They need to be uh, active. You know, like they need you need active hitboxes. You need to stretch your wings. So, you <laughs> so yeah. So look at the notice that Marth is not setting up for early aerials. He's setting up for the late aerials. God, that's so and he you could have. Yeah, you punished yeah. him out of that. Okay, so now you're right here. This happens. Okay, this is this is this has to be an up air. It does. Um, well, the up air. Your goal against Marth is for him to be directly above you, because okay. when he's directly above you, he doesn't have any moves that really deal any sort of mix up or anything against you. Like he can kind of do like a random late, like he can do like a random falling dare, like. If he's directly above you, and other than that, he doesn't really have any super good options, like except for trying to drift to the side of you in forward air. But if you hit him with this back air, I was about to say, look, if you hit him with this back air, what it does is it gives him that falling forward air that he wants. Like in this situation, yeah. you don't. Marth actually wins this situation because he's right here. He's just gonna drop and fair, and it'll beat anything you do. Yeah, literally anything. So bam. So that's why right here, you really want to either do... You you can get away right here if you really want with floating right here and nairing. Like mm -hmm. float right here and nair him back towards the platform. But almost always, I would 100% recommend right here you do a, an up air. Float yeah. right here and up air. Or full hop up air. Those are, those are like your options. But the back air here literally just gives him the advantage out of your combo and then he hits yeah. you for it. For sure. Okay, that was actually really good. I like that back air. Yep. So you went for the back air again there. If you're gonna go for an option here, so I would actually still say up air here because if he di's out, he goes off stage, and if he doesn't, he ends up right above you in this annoying spot, and you have time to pluck a turnip. Should your I other... almost huh? always like when they're on platform like that, go for up air. Say that unless again. Like die. Should I almost always go for up air at those presents? Okay. I like. Up. Yeah, and the other option here is nair. Yeah. Okay. And then also, uh, forward air is kind of not that useful against Marth at a lot of percents, but it's sort yeah. of lower percents. It's really good if you can get it, an opportunity for it. Mm -hmm. At these percents, it's not super useful. What, what in the world just happened there? Okay, so you come down. Um, hmm. This is kind of an ambiguous spot, but personally, as a piece, like, there might be an argument to be made that you're doing the right thing here. But mm. personally, in this situation, I prefer dropping to center here. Because then what you can do is he thinks you're going to jump up at him or try to pressure. And so he might dash dance or shield on the platform. And then as soon as he does that, you can just do a wave dash back or run back and turn up pluck right here. And you'll still have the pluck, but you won't have given up so much stage. For sure. So because you go all the way to the corner, mm -hmm. like, what it, like, what is Marth thinking you're going to do here? Is he thinking you're going to go all the way to the corner and try to hit him? Nah, you're going to pluck here. And so he just gets free all the stage. He gets the whole stage yeah. for free. And it's like, hooray, I have the turn up out. But does that make up for the fact that I'm now completely in the corner? You know? Yeah. Okay, what happens? He hit this. He crouches it and then catches it. Um, I don't understand this. This back here here. Cause you like won this situation. Like he catches the turnip. Marth with a turnip in his hand is awful. So you can immediately just run in and try to hit him. Especially grounded. Like he what can he do with it grounded? Straight up, I, yeah. Nothing. I, don't know if it was, I thought I jumped, but I don't know. It was still bad. Yeah, like here, I would go for a dash attack here or a nair pressure into grab. Or like a nair on shield down smash or something like that. Mm -hmm. 
One thing that a lot of peaches I don't see them use that Armada uses a lot in this matchup is he will go for fair or nair on shield into down smash, like very, very aggressively. And the reasoning behind it is that you will take out a big chunk of Marth's shield, and Marth doesn't have a great shield to begin with. Mm -hmm. So, like, let's say you um, fair or nair on his shield into a down smash, and then he grabs you and punishes you, and you air dodge back into the ground, and then it kind of resets to neutral, and you go in for another attack on him, he is going to be a lot more scared because the second Nair or Fair down smash will almost always poke his shield. Mm -hmm. So, like, by getting a bunch of shield damage on his shield, you make the matchup a lot easier for yourself, and also, if he's on a platform, his shield won't work because it's tiny. Yeah. So, it's like, in those types of situations... It's just, you're not really going to get anything out of this, and if you approach yeah. him, he can't really do anything, you, so you should you should like 100% be approaching in that situation. Yeah. Okay. This yeah, is classic Peach Marth. Oh, sorry. You get the mix-up, where you land, and then somehow you still die out of it. So I think this was, this was a really smart mix-up. I actually wouldn't have thought of that, but then... He catches you with this. Um, so the thing is, is when you get here, Should I shield it right no. here. This is like the attack zone. Like as soon as you're here, yeah. this is time to murder Marth, <laughs> because the so uh, just the the only thing he can do from here is downer you, and it's not gonna do any good. I think I'm so stuck on, and I have to pull turn up, or I can't win. So, like, any time, I'm just like, I gotta get a turn up, I gotta get a turn up. That doesn't matter. Right, well, I, that yeah, makes right. sense. It makes sense, because there are a lot of situations where you do need the turn up. Mm -hmm. But the turn up is for grounded neutral. Okay. That is what the turn up is for. Yeah, yeah, When yeah, he yeah. is above you, this is this is hitbox time. Like, it's time to party. It's time to throw out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is time to let the tech skill go. And yeah, if you had if you had right here, if you had just thrown out a move, he would have died. Or not died, but you know, off stage. Yeah. Potentially dead. Okay, so you come back, you get the free turnip pluck, that's perfect. Let's see what happens here. I'm a, my stream's a little behind. Oh, oh, I not screen sharing you, am I? No, I'm just watching your stream. Oh no. You should have said my my mistake. Here, I'm Discord You're screen sharing you. This should this should sync it up better. Oh, I'm sorry about that. No, it's fine. I caught him. Right, okay. All right. So you get this turn up. I think it's very... So you work so hard for the turn up, you know? Yeah. And then you spend it like it's nothing. Yeah. And so... You're right. It's like you finally get this turn up. <laughs> Remember this situation marth can't do anything to you from here marth doesn't have turnips <laughs> you know he doesn't have lasers yeah. he doesn't have needles he doesn't have any way to actually interact with you here mm -hmm. and so and he's kind of in a bad spot on the platform so like the and remember the longer marth shields on the platform the worse he, he the worse he gets so you mm -hmm. can pressure from here and you have the turnip like so peach is a wall but she is like a wall on wheels <laughs> where you can be walling someone, but you can slowly be moving towards them. And so that's more what you want to do. So, like, right here, you're, like, kind of like, okay, so if Marth runs off the platform and fares, then I still have a turn up here, and I can set up, like, a pressure. But he goes for this, and you're just like, let it rip, like, turn up time. <laughs> and it's like, it doesn't necessarily, like, give you anything here. Like, even yeah. if this turn up hits, you won't actually get, like, a combo out of it. For sure. Yeah, makes sense. So you get this pressure anyway, which is good. Oh, great shield poke. That was like fantastic, actually. Thank you. That was very, very good to hit this back air. So that was super, super, super good. Um, you get him off stage. Let's see what your edge guard flow chart looks like. I'm so bad at edge guarding Mars. <laughs> okay, this one was this was close, so Yeah. It's embarrassing how bad I am. So I this is a very difficult edge guard flow chart to the mm -hmm. point where like a lot of times even the even like Armada will like miss it. Mm -hmm. And 
but what you want to do is you want to still just maximize your odds of hitting Marth. So I personally think that when you have enough time to pull a turnip, you should always pull it. Okay. Because even if you decide not to use... So first of all, this float aerial you do, this would work perfectly well with a turnip. Mm -hmm. Okay, and especially the fact that you're at zero here. So you, if you... Well, okay, so there's not maybe not enough time in this specific situation to pull the turnip, I'm not sure. But what you want to do here is if Marth basically you can go for the trade here. Yeah. So what I like to do is I like to drop the back air onto him. So what I I'm like, yeah. hmm? I like that too. No, sorry, keep going. Okay, so yeah, what I'm doing here is I'm waiting for Marth to go a little bit lower or even with me, and then I'll do the back air. And then sometimes what you can do is you can wait it out, and Marth will do a fair, and then you grab ledge, and then he'll die. Always get hit by the fair. <laughs> I know mm -hmm. exactly what fair you're talking about. It always hits me. Oh, yeah, so right here, basically, you, you commit early, and that lets him get back. Mm -hmm. Okay, what happens after that? I just miss it, but you know. Okay, yeah, you miss the float aerial. This happens, you go high. Obviously, the down air is kind of worthless yeah. there. You shouldn't be going for that. Either the air dodge or the aerial mix up. Okay, there's the forward throw, that's good. Um, I would say this is one of those situations where you're usually not gonna get the edge guard anyway, so yeah. it's, you're better off to pluck the turn up. Yeah, you're right. And, like, even, like, you're saying that you're so focused on plucking a turnip, but, like, you don't pluck it at all, even when he's on ledge. Yeah. This is, when Martha's on ledge, like, that's that's a turnip pull. For sure. And then yeah. never, you never want to do this drop onto Marth, because it makes you really predictable. Like, if you're going to go for this fair, you should be going for, like, a grounded version of it. And if he tournament winners, you can still just full hop near him from the ground, and it'll hit. Okay. So you don't actually need to float at this height. It doesn't actually like really cover anything. Okay, wow, he fares you between that. Okay. You definitely need to be way more... I think one thing you could really practice is your instant nares. I think having like yeah. really clean instant nares is like one of the best tools that you can have as a peach. And I think that like you really need to get those. Because this is... In my head, this is an instant nair. Like, in, yeah, like every right. time. Or a down smash. Both are good there. Both down smash and instant air are good there. Okay, good. That was good. I like that. I think uh, maybe this isn't exactly like the level of play that uh, I should be talking about this, but I think up air is probably better here. Because if you nair, I'm pretty sure he can technically omps attack it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You're right. No, I, I get omps attack. That's a very time. small, small detail. Yeah. Um, okay, so I know this is really tempting right here where you're like oh no here he comes but like this is what he wants like yeah he wants you he wants yeah. wait what happened to my mouse it like stopped showing up on the the replay screen uh hello replay okay i'll just start this again that was weird oh wait where's my mouse <laughs> that okay apparently yeah. dolphin settings do just change Sometimes. Um, wait, where's the... Do you know where the thing to show the mouse is? I don't, sorry. Okay. Um, there it is. It was showing now. Oh. <laughs> okay, now it's showing. Whatever. Whatever. Okay. So let's skip through. We'll skip through. Oh, did, is it stop when you play? I think you just might just have to pause. Oh. Oh, okay. I guess that's okay. If I do frame perfect mode, does it? Yeah, I can do frame perfect mode and show it. Okay, that's fine. I didn't realize it did that. Okay, where were we? How far were we? Let's see, we're right. Oh, okay, we're like right here. So yeah, this would be this is this is a quick nair here, in my opinion. But you get this, which is a really good up throw and like into the tech chase. I think that was really smart. Um, because at least. For whatever reason, he didn't DI that. If he had DI'd it, it probably would have been worse than the forward throw, but it worked out for you, so. Yeah, when he comes back invincible right here, you really don't want to jump. 
if you're gonna do something you know like roll or something like that like jumping like here one? put huh i just don't know what to do when mars invincible like at all um okay so your two options are either be on the ground and like float around or sorry not float around roll around either be on the ground and roll around and shield or you you can float off stage and then sort of come back to the top platform it's not s super great to do that but like Peach doesn't have great options against Marth and Invincibility anyway, but you can't do, like, the spacey thing of light shielding on the platform because he can just, like, fare you off and then you're in the air and then he can hit you again. Like, he can, like, fare up tilt you on the off the platform and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So you don't really want to do any kind of stuff like that. You might be able to get away with light shielding in the middle of the platform, I'm not sure. But regardless, like... You don't really have any good options. Like, basically, he's going to have potential reads on you anyway. So you don't want it to be that when his invincibility runs out, you're in a disadvantaged spot. Like, he can read you no matter what you do. So you what you like, basically, you still you, like you want to just minimize your risk as much as possible. By staying in good positions. So it's like, again, you get your you get your turn up and you're like, sick, I got my turn up. And you're like. Eh, who wants it? Like, I don't want it. And it's like, that was your tool. That was, like, your yeah. your way of fighting, Marth. So it's like, what you need to do is be very ready for extended ground neutral. If Marth is not playing ground neutral and he's running around on the platforms, that makes your life better. Both of these characters excel in the grounded neutral zone. And so as long as you have the turnip, you should basically... Unless you're going to, like, knit or something. Mm-hmm. Like you should be prepared for the long grounded neutral with this. So you like you like there's no point in throwing this, but he gives you a chance to pluck another one, which is good. Yeah. So you get it, you get that. Oh, slightly too high of the turn throw, that's fine. Okay. Okay, that that's a good mix up between that and the air dodge. Uh okay, so like in these types of situations, really, really careful. Don't don't like jump here, basically ever. Yeah, okay. Grounded yeah. neutral, grounded neutral, grounded neutral. Yeah, 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 yeah. This could have been a dash attack. Yeah, it could have been. You're right. Yeah, never do that. <laughs> like, this is, like, yeah. just strictly dumb. Because you're like, come yeah, on, Marth, yeah. fight me in a spacing battle. And if he's like, oh, forward smash, then is <laughs> there is no spacing battle, basically. So, yeah, he goes for, the he goes for that. Yep. Okay, he's bad at edge guarding. Um, this is that situation again, whereas like if you were ready to fake turn up pluck here, like if you had crouched here and getting ready to fake turn up pluck, because like sometimes yeah, you want to just rush the turn up pluck out, but only mm -hmm. when the Marth is already committed to being defensive. So if you're unsure if the Marth is going to be defensive or not, you can do the fake turn up pull here, and if you had done so, you would have gotten a free punish. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I just... Uh, me second. Okay, that was good. Mm, up here, probably right? up here there. Yeah. Yeah, that should yeah, have been up here for sure. There, yeah. Okay, good air dodge. That was good. This is like what you want. You Okay, you go high. I think that I think this is okay. So I think this was good for the most part, right here. But I would honestly prefer going extra high here and going to the top platform. Is it, is downer never gonna work here? I feel like it's just no. It's it's it's, it's awful. <laughs> it's yeah. like literally like not functional. Like your options here are float away to the top platform or act like you're gonna float to the top and he jumps up here and then you fast fall air dodge to the ground. I get cheek a lot with it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's yeah specifically awful against marth because he has yeah. sword because sword <laughs> for sure okay that was good okay this is that was a fine down smash i think that was actually a good down smash okay he catches you on the mix up there you land here good good perfect 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 no <laughs> so it's like all right so it's like this perfect this is perfect up here perfect pluck the turn up perfect then the answer is Shark Marth. Shark okay. Marth here. Don't let him down. And you want to get directly beneath him. Okay. Directly beneath him. Not 
get rid of turnip that you finally plucked. It's like you finally <laughs> plucked it, and you're like, I don't need this don't necessary it. tool. Need like, <laughs> and it's like that is it's very. You, you need it. You need the turnip. <laughs> yeah, you know right. you need yeah. the turnip, right? Like, you've been mentioning yeah, you need right. the turnip. The turnip doesn't do any good up here. Mm -hmm. Because even if this turnip hits, let's say Marth just shuts his brain off for a second and the turnip hits, it doesn't help. You don't get anything. Mm -hmm. You needed that turnip. So, okay, so this is good. When Marth is on platform here, you're going for this aerial. I like this a lot. This. But personally, I think... If you have the presence of mind, it's mm -hmm. better to float Nair here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. And the, Okay, so you're here. You're doing this float thing again. I don't think this float is worth anything. You're probably right. Um, okay, so you're doing this again. Oh, no. Awful, awful, awful. Never do this. Never, never jump like this. Ever. Not grounded. Never, never, never do this. Ever, ever, ever. He will simply fare you out of the air, and you will die. Yeah, yeah, for sure. See, so yes, you do that. That's bad. And then you jump up here. It's basically like your game plan revolves around the grounded neutral, or should. So, like when you're here and this is happening, like this is not good. And then immediately here, if you had been playing to grounded neutral here, this is a free oh, yeah, dash probably. attack, yeah. or a pressure with like a, like a, ah, probably just a dash attack. But yeah, so jumping up here, this is basically winning the game for Marth. There's yeah. no reason to do it, and it just makes it really easy to react to. Like, from, yeah. from Marth's perspective, Peach here, this is terrifying, because you can hit, you can actually punish him for this up Yeah, tilt. yeah, yeah, yeah. Peach here, not as terrifying. Nothing. All he has to do is dash back, and he knows it. Peach here, like, three. Yeah. Literally yeah, no right. threat to Marth at all. Yeah, and right. here, there's negative threat. This is like the easiest thing for him to punish in yeah. the world, and he does. And he waits so he can get the forward smash, but you go low to avoid it. That just happens. It's fine. So pluck, get rid of the turnip pointlessly again. Yeah, I'm just too... It's a really bad habit. Pluck, okay, so this is good. He comes in. All right, yeah, so this is a situation where you see him probably approaching... You pluck. But that's the mix up, right? Well, the thing is, so right here, the pluck is fine. Okay. What I'm saying is when he does this nair, you have to be able to react to his jump arc right here and do dash away and then throw the turnip back at him. Okay. Because, like, you can uh, jump cancel turnip throw, I'm pretty sure. So I think you can just do dash and then jump throw turnip. Really? Uh, yeah, I should do that. Okay. Uh, this is the same back air again. You do it too early. If you had done this back air just a little bit later, it'd be really, really good. Like, I, I do like the back air to edge guard here, but you're throwing it out preemptively, assuming he's going to fall. But the, the real thing is that if he does this side B, you get a free back air if you react to it. And if he doesn't do it and he drops, you can just drop your back air and it'll hit him anyway down here. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I've hit. So just I delay those backers a little bit more, and it'll help a lot. Should I re be reacting to the side B? Like that yeah, you, well, goal? you're baiting the side B, basically. Yeah, okay. Okay, another pointless turnip. Yeah. Like, that's not... It doesn't help. You want grounded yeah. neutral. Grounded. Yeah, you're right. Okay, now you're kind of stuck in this spot. This spot, awful. Okay, yep, right here, that was another nair. Every time he downers your shield like that, this should be Nair. in your head. You should be going for Nair here. For sure. And then, yeah, so you get kind of scared here for no reason. No. Right here. There's no... This is grounded neutral. It's okay. There's no reason to jump right here. If you're going to jump when he's up in the air, you should be throwing out a hit to try to hit him. And if you're not going to jump, you should be continuing to play in the ground. Putting yourself in this position does nothing but give Marth an easy time. Yeah. Okay. Oh, look at that. Grounded neutral. Good, good job on the up air. Yeah, look, when you, when you play grounded, it's a lot, I easier, win. It's a lot I easier to hit hard. Because he's going... So look, he noticed that he doesn't go for the early aerial. He's going for the late aerial, which is like what Marth does. So look, he jumps up, goes to the late aerial. Bam, you catch him out of this. You hit him with the up air. This is good. Then he's kind of in this awkward spot, so he shields. You double jump Nair. That was all really good. Then he comes down in this spot. Um, 
this is a spot where it's very awkward for you. Basically, your two choices are to read Marth double jumping here early. Like, basically, you can full hop in a Nair here as sort of like a very aggressive read. Or you can pluck a turnip here as the more uh, conservative read. Sure. The, sure. But both of the, both of those work here. But what doesn't work is trying to catch Marth landing because once again he's going to land with a forward air and it'll outrange you. Yeah. So if you had had if you were in this same situation, but you either jumped in and hit him here with another up air, that would be good for you. And if you had had a turn up right here and you stood right here and you threw it as he landed, you would have still mm -hmm. gotten an opening. Potentially. And yeah, then you just get marked. <laughs> and yeah, that's gonna happen. That is gonna happen. Okay, so that's the game, and that is an hour, but we can talk for another couple minutes. Um, Alright, what are your thoughts on what's going on here? I'm just surprised on how wrong I was playing neutral. <laughs> <laughs> like how objectively wrong I was playing. You're right. I agree with everything you said, but like, mm -hmm. I just think I'm so like used to like being scared of grab that I'm like, I gotta get off the ground. I'm gonna get grabbed. I'm mm -hmm. gonna get grabbed. That I, I'm I'm too antsy. Like you're right. Like when I'm up there, like top where I was, that's just like, please fair me, please fair me, and I like I can do nothing. <laughs> yeah, please fair me, and I can do nothing is exactly what it is. Exactly. So it's like by. Playing to those grounded neutral positions, even if they, like, quote, seem scarier, you have mm. significantly more threats on Marth in those positions. And mm. so it's actually less scary because you can, like I said, you can make Marth respect you, you know? Yeah. So between, sure. so there's the fake, there's the fake turnip pluck, getting the turnip, using the fake turnip pluck, making Marth respect that he can't just rush you. And when you play grounded neutral, a lot of times you'll be able to reactively shield his approaching nares or crouch his approaching nares, stuff like that. So it just gives you a lot more options to deal with him and just sort of basically create threats and make the most use of your turnips also. And yeah, so I think I'm too focused on like creating space with turnip where I just waste them, but they don't do anything. Mm -hmm. I'm like, in my head, I'm like, I'm creating space, but I'm like, <laughs> wasting my only resource. I think it's because your goal is like you're trying to avoid Marth stuff, whereas your the real goal is trying to get close enough to Marth that you can spam on him. But yeah. you don't want to. So it's like you want to get close. You want to get close to Marth without approaching him. Yeah. That's the goal of the matchup. And it's a little tricky, but thankfully you have turnips and Marth will try to approach you cuz it's basically if Marth never approaches, the entire match is just you chucking turnip after turnip until you have a yeah. beam sword or a stitch face and then he's at a disadvantage. Like okay. Peach actually just like wins with those. Like she's nuts okay. when she has those items or even like a Mr. Saturn. And so like he doesn't want you to just sit there and pluck and throw the whole match. So he is going to have to approach you at some point. Mm -hmm. And if he directly approaches you to stop you from throwing the turnips, you want to hit him with the fake turnip, either fake turnip pull dash attack or fake turnip pull back air. Yeah. That mix up's going to be really helpful for me. That that crouch back. Yeah, I think I think that's a, a really big thing that a lot of people miss in yeah. the matchup. So you once, you, once you establish that, then Marth is like, okay, I need to prevent her from pulling turnip after turnip, but I can't do it by directly approaching. And then that's when the real matchup starts, where Marth is kind of trying to zone you in your face, and you're kind of yeah. doing like these close to like close mix-ups of like because when Marth is basically trying to zone you in your face, that is when it opens up your ability to be able to dash attack and to be able to shield like wave dash and shield Nair and stuff like that. So, like, all the actual aggressive mix-ups that you can get only happen once you can make Marth respect your space with the, the turnip pulls and the fake turnip pulls and staying close to the ground. Yeah. So, I think that all... If you rewatch this lesson, too, I think all of these things combined will help out immensely if you I just agree. make sure to stick to the game plan and it'll help out a lot. For sure. Are you going to upload this to YouTube? Uh, yeah. All right, bet, bet. So, uh, yeah, I'll probably upload it later today. I sometimes I think I'm, like, a day behind on videos or something. So. Oh, no rush. No but, uh, yeah, otherwise it's in my Twitch VODs if you want to rewatch it. But I'll, I'll sure. be uploading it to YouTube. And uh, it was nice talking. 
and I'll, sure. I'll see you around. It, yeah, it, I appreciate it. Feel free to uh, hit me up with any questions or if you have a clip where you're confused in. Like, feel free to hit me up about that. It's not a I appreciate deal. that. All right, sick. That. Have a good one. Yeah, you have a good day. Bye.